<clears throat> Our next presenters are from Eastern Region. They're with the FAA safety program there, and they're going to be talking about a new workshop initiative that involves CFIs and designated pilot examiners. They're working uh, with the program right now, and we have the regional manager from Eastern Region's uh, FAST team, and we have a program manager from the Eastern Region's FAST team also, Jim Levitt. Please welcome Mr. Joseph Foresto and Jim Levitt. I guess uh, it's hello, and we're really excited to here to, uh, to be. It's sun and fun down in Florida in this great, great facility. Jim Lever and I uh, have been working this program. Uh, we were tasked from headquarters to develop a program that was based on a program that Larry Enloe had begun out of the Orlando FISDO, where they analyzed accident data, and they saw that there was a big need to bring the CFI and the DPE together to start talking and see what can they do in the community to reduce these number of accidents. So I was tasked to develop this. Jim, who I knew from a previous life, I was a training center program manager in Part 142, that's a similarly based training uh, regulation. Uh, Jim was with Flight Safety at the time, and then he joined the FAA, which we're so happy about. Uh, and then I put Jim in charge of this project. He developed a work group nationally, and we are growing this program to be a national program. Uh, you hear through our presentation that there is an order that's currently being uh, approved through the approval process that will allow us to give it out to the flight standards, flight safe, <laughs> yeah, fast team program managers so they then have guidance on how to conduct the programs out in the field. So uh, without further ado, I want to initially turn this over here to Jim. Jim will begin our presentation on uh, some of the aspects of what we're doing in the CFI program. Uh, and uh, you'll see how this grows, and at the end, we'll take some questions from the audience. So, Jim, it's all yours at this point. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and, and let me add my uh, appreciation for being able to be here uh, to, to make this uh, program a little more well-known, we hope, uh, and how it uh, affects and uh, benefits uh, certified flight instructors, uh, designated pilot examiners, and, and more uh, more importantly, the, uh, the total aviation safety of, uh, of everyone. Uh, these programs are, are called Fast Team CFI DPE Workshops. And the, the, the word workshop is key. What we, uh, what we intend to do is uh, provide a, a platform where uh, those people who are involved in aviation education and aviation uh, evaluation or evaluation of aviators more correctly can meet up uh, talk about the trials and tribulations that they experience and discuss what the best ways for uh, training and and checking are and and share the information um, we, we've got uh, we've got a bit of a presentation here that uh, that we'd like to share with you we're going to attempt to uh, identify what it is we do, how we plan to do it, and, and how it will, uh, again, how it will be of benefit. So one of the things that, uh, that is important when you're doing training, uh, how many instructors do we have? Do we have any CFIs? Oh, good. Thank goodness there's, there's some out there. And, and there was one, uh, one comment a little earlier. You people in the FAA have an acronym for any, everything. And, uh, uh, CFI does stand for Certificated Flight Instructor, and DPE is uh, uh, the, the code for Designated Pilot Examiner. So workshops is self-explanatory, I think. Uh, just, just again so that you'll know who we are and, and why we're involved, uh, Joe Foresto is the Eastern Region Fast Team Program Manager. He's my boss. and. And quite honestly, he's the one that has made it, it possible for me to, uh, to devote a certain amount of my time uh, to helping to develop this project. And, uh, and his, his background is, uh, is, is heavy in aviation. He's, he's been involved in aviation uh, pretty nearly all his adult life. Sometimes he doesn't really act like an adult, but he is, I think. 
I, I'm an Eastern Region Program Manager, which means I work for Joe. My territory is in the, in the Northeast. I work primarily in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And there are other counterparts in that area that, that work uh, with me, or I work with them, however you want to say it. That's who we are. Our, our, our function in this, uh, in this project has been to, uh, to, to, to facilitate its progress up to this point. And we'll try and, we'll try and tell you what, what that point is. Here's some things that we're going to talk about today. Wh what are these workshops? Why do we need them? Uh, who are they for? How often are they going to be presented? And why should anyone come to them? Um, I had on the, uh, on the presentation initially the uh, a reference to the law of primacy. Any of you CFIs remember what that law of primacy is? I don't see any hands. That's, uh, that's interesting. What is the law of primacy? That says that you really need to, uh, if you're going to teach something, and it applies to all kinds of education, I'm sure, not, uh, not only uh, flight training, but, but anything that we, that we want to, any information we want to share with people and have it stick, uh, you need to teach it right the first time. Uh, because uh, that's the way it's going to be remembered. And once, once you have uh, provided information to, to someone and they remember that, uh, it's really hard to reteach it. So, so part, of our, part of our interest is, is helping instructors and, and students uh, learn what's right the first time and it's not that we know what's right so much as as a group uh, instructors will be able to uh, share what they know share what works for them at these workshops and determine what's right and how they want to present commonly presented information things that are necessary in the uh, in the process of training folks um, CFI meetings themselves have been done with quite a bit of success in a number of areas of the country. Uh, so we can't really say this is a new idea. Uh, it's not an original or fresh concept necessarily. Uh, the, the fact uh, of, of getting people together and, and sharing information is, is not a new idea. Innovative thinking well, maybe we're a bit innovative in, in how we want to do this. What we want to do is uh, we want this to be a national program. And in fact, it is focused on being a national program. And that's our, uh, that's our goal. Uh, an example of the success that, and, and, and an example of, of where these meetings have happened in the past, uh, we had a very successful uh, CFI meeting program in Florida. And that's been going on and it still goes on. Uh, there have been, a, a, there has been a, a specifically successful uh, CFI meeting program in Alaska, uh, which continues to go on. And, and virtually everywhere that, uh, that there are a number of flight instructors and ground instructors, uh, they have, uh, on their own, uh, had meetings, and, and it's, in fact, it's required at, uh, at certificated flight schools that they meet regularly with, with their uh, chief instructors. So this is not necessarily a new idea, um, but it, it has a, 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 a wider purpose uh, now because we, we, want to, uh, we want to have it be more of a uh, a national and standardized program. And the purpose is uh, to share lessons learned, uh, discuss best practices that have been established, uh, and, and share individual training experiences. Uh, and that information needs to be available to everybody who teaches or evaluates 
in the, in the aviation field. And that's what workshops are. The, the difficulty is to, f is to find a time and a place uh, to have these meetings, to get, get the folks together. Um, anybody who is a, a, an active flight instructor knows that, especially during the times of the year when the weather is good, uh, it's, difficult to, uh, it's difficult to find time to meet. It's difficult to find time to discuss those things that are important. They kind of get put off to the side a little bit. But if you can, if you can find a reason and a place uh, for these aviation educators to meet up and get them in a group and offer up a topic of discussion, uh, it's pretty easy to, to find that a, a good conversation that really ends up in collaboration occurs. So again, the CFI DPE workshops are that place. Uh, this, is, this is where we will uh, facilitate the possibility of shared knowledge. This has happened again with documented success in those places I mentioned earlier, Florida, Alaska, and every state in the Union, really. Wherever there has been uh, regularly scheduled uh, meetings that enabled conversation and shared training, aviation safety has improved. It's, 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 it's a known fact. The quality of education improves. Uh, aviation safety has improved, uh, resulting in fewer, fewer accidents. And standardization has improved. And with the improvement and increase in standardization, the law of primacy is well served. What happens is that training is done right the first time. Now, neither Joe or I uh, intend to suggest that there's anything wrong with the flight training that's done in the U.S. at this time anyway. That's not the point. Um, what we're suggesting is that the training maybe could be done better if, uh, if it was possible to share techniques and information among ourselves. An example, um, Joe is really good with aircraft performance. He's, he's, he's one of the best I've ever listened to when it comes to what makes airplanes do what they do. Um, in fact, sometimes uh, I, I find myself squinting as if it was going to help me hear and understand better when he really gets going. Uh, anybody ever do that? You've, as if it was going to make you hear better? Um, but, but he really, that, that's, that's his, one of his many areas of expertise. Now I can talk about stick and rudder stuff. Uh, you know, why, what happens in steep turns and what you might expect students to do that uh, would be uh, undesirable, et cetera, et cetera. But when I start talking about performance, uh, it gets to be, well, you know, the book, and there's a line on the graph, and the thing, it starts sounding like a Bill Cosby routine, really. The children come in, and they want, to, it's, it, so, so I can learn from Joe when, when I need to teach, pre, or when I need to present information about, about performance. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to suggest that he's going to learn from me about stick and rudder stuff. And by that I mean, you know, the basics of making the airplane do what you want it to do. Um, but, you know, I might have something that he could use, maybe. And he's probably going to get after me for saying that uh, uh, publicly. But my point is that the, the, the same holds true. Any of you in the, uh, in the audience here who are flight instructors, uh, if we all got together and sat down and, and, and talked about uh, maybe why is it that, uh, that takeoffs and landings are one of, the, uh, one of the areas of operation where there is the, the, by far the most accidents, it, not only in general aviation but, but in, in all of aviation. If we all got together and collaborated about well, why is that? Uh, the folks learn how to take off and land. They, they, 
every time they take off, they've got to land, so they, they practice and, and, uh, and, and they were tested to, uh, you know, when they got their certificate to, to demonstrate that they could take off and land with various techniques uh, as necessary. So why is, it, uh, why is it they're having those accidents? Well, if we got together and talked about it, we probably could come up with some of the reasons why that might be happening and what we could do about it. And, and that's the idea behind a CFI DPE meetings, a place for that, that conversation. Now, in addition, we're going to talk about uh, some other aspects of the CFI DPE program uh, and, and specifically uh, what other things we're going to be doing at these workshops. And, and that part of that is that uh, we're going to be providing information and training uh, that's required uh, for folks to uh, renew their certificate, renew their CFI. And for any of you who, who don't know how that works, uh, flight instructors, certificated flight instructors initially uh, are trained to be such. They are tested to be tested and awarded the, uh, the privilege of being certificated flight instructors, training people uh, signing their logbooks, having that count towards uh, the, the necessary requirements and training that, uh, that are, are needed for their particular certificate, whatever they're learning at the time. Um, the, uh, the, the designated pilot examiners are the ones that test those folks. Anyway, what we want to do is, uh, like I said, we want to gather them up and, and have a program that's, that's somewhat uh, like what the air carriers do. The air carriers understand that, that multiple, uh, multiple trainers and multiple evaluators will actually produce uh, better end results because a, there is a combination of ideas and techniques involved in their training. Uh, the, air, the airlines all have training departments and they all use uh, pilots, uh, line pilots who, who are out there doing the job and have the talents to share that information. The end result for the airlines is, is well-prepared and well-educated flight crews. Again, that's the concept here. Uh, we just want to share with each other what we know, what we're good at, and, and help everybody be good in areas that they might be a bit weak in. And that concept should work at a national level. But when you, uh, when you go to, I'll tell you what, when you go to take something national, it's a big chore. It's, it's a big ship to start or stop. What that means is that we have to have a coordinated effort in the eastern region, the central region, southern region, southwest, uh, Northwest Mountain, Western Pacific, all those areas where the flight uh, fast team uh, has regions uh, need to come together and, and focus nationally on, on this project uh, if it's going to have the maximum effect. And, and that effect is to, 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 to increase the audience. Uh, today we've got, uh, we've got some folks here with us and, and by the way, I, I'm very impressed that, that you folks are in here listening to me rather than out there at, uh, at Sun and Fun enjoying the really nice weather and, and, and seeing all those uh, fascinating airplanes of, of every description. I, I don't even listen to myself very much, so I'm surprised that you're willing to. But you're in here now, and they won't let you out, so, uh, so you're going to have to stay. But uh, on a national basis, if we, uh, if we have information to share, uh, we, can, uh, we, we can involve everyone, and that's, that's the idea, to apply the combined knowledge and experience of, of many to the aviation education process, not just those of us that are in the room or those of us that are in the FAST team. We want to elevate aviation safety to its, to its highest standard through education, education of, of our students, and our, our participant aviators, those who want what we have, and, and we want to 
collaboratively share what we have as far as training techniques and knowledge with all the other instructors. That's why we need the workshops. The purpose of the FAST Team CFI DP workshop is to facilitate the sharing of knowledge and experience. Uh, and, and that then will help to satisfy the goal of increasing aviation safety. Now, again, the, our, our purpose is, 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 is much broader than, than eliminating or reducing the number of accidents during training. Of course, we don't want accidents during training either. Um, but, but, but our thinking is that if we, if we involve as many of the educators, the aviation educators as possible, who will share the concepts, share the knowledge, and, and, and provide that to their students, will go a long way in, in additionally um, enhancing aviation safety for everyone. You, me, Joe, everybody that flies will be safer because the airspace will be safer. Education is the key. We want to, we want to enhance aviation safety by providing the best education from, from everyone who has something to provide uh, and do it right the first time. And we want testing to be standardized as well. Uh, for those that might not understand it, uh, we talked about it first, uh, CFIs, Certificated Flight Instructors, and DPEs, Designated Pilot Examiners. Any, designa any DPEs out there? Don't have a DPE in the house. The, uh, the designated pilot examiners most likely are also certificated flight instructors. There may be cases when, when that isn't uh, a fact, but, but in most cases, uh, it would be very difficult to be a designated pilot examiner because of the requirements uh, if you were not a certificated flight instructor. So, uh, the, the, the training concepts apply to everybody. The, uh, the, the participation of the, uh, of the designated pilot examiners is very, very important in this program. This program is different from the uh, ones I spoke of initially, uh, the ones that originated in, in Florida, right here actually, and still go on, the ones in Alaska, and the meetings that have been held uh, around the states. Uh, this one, this program, with the backing of the FAA safety team and, and the FAA, uh, is, is intended to be a, a national uh, program that, uh, that, will, that will make available information to everyone. It's going to be standardized. I'll explain to you in a moment why it's going to be convenient or how it's going to be. It's going to be ongoing. It's not something that's, uh, that's only going to happen once a year or once every two years. And again, for those of you who may not know, a certificated flight instructor needs to renew his or her certificate uh, every 24 calendar months. Um, and what happens occasionally is that that renewal process uh, is um, concentrated just prior to the renewal requirement, which is fine. I mean, those programs, uh, those programs share and provide information and training uh, that's very comprehensive, but it's, it's at a very limited time in the, uh, in the two years that the flight instructor can be out practicing. This program is continuous. Again, it, it, it's made up of meetings that are spread out actually over two years. And again, the thought is that as things change and as there's more information available to be shared, uh, it's, easier to, it's easier to get it to the people who really need it. So CFIs, and, and we're saying CFIs, which uh, certificated flight instructors, those are the folks that, that go in the airplane and do training. They do ground training too, but, but we think of a CFI primarily as, as being uh, the individual that goes in the airplane and, and actually teaches you how to fly. 
there are ground instructors as well. And they, they provide a, a, an enormously important function. They, they conduct classes on the ground to prepare uh, pilot applicants for the written testing that's required as a part of the uh, certification process. Well, we want the ground instructors involved in this program as well. And of course, the designated pilot examiners. So that's who. That's, that's an answer to the original questions. Who we want uh, would be CFI's ground instructors and designated pilot examiners primarily. And the inclusion of those, those three groups of individuals uh, is, is one or another way that, that these uh, workshops are unique. We're not focusing only on instructors, flight instructors. We're, we're, we, we want all the people who educate and or evaluate involved. The more the merrier. The more people we have involved, uh, the more information that we'll all get out of it. Tell you a little bit about how the program works, and then uh, Joe's going to pick up here in a little bit. I think Joe, do you have anything to add? I'm, I'm. I'll continue. I'll, I'll pick up at the end. Okay. I'm not sure that's good. We'll see how it goes. Listen, let me tell you briefly about how this how this thing works, how these workshops come together, uh, how they will be available. The the program provides for eight workshops in a workshop series. Um, each of these workshops has different modules and the modules, the training modules, uh, contain required training topics. Now remember, we're, 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 doing, we're, we're accomplishing two things here. We're, we're, we're conducting the, the, the training, the, re the review, if you will, uh, the familiarization with new material to those people who want to renew their, their certificates, which is required every two years. We're, we're accomplishing that, and whenever I speak about required topics, that's where, we, that's, that's where we're satisfying that requirement. And let me point out, if I may, that that, that requirement uh, for training is the same uh, for any, any provider of uh, instructor renewal uh, programs. So we had to qualify it for it uh, just the same as, 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 as industry would have to. Now the required topics are presented according to lesson plans. Yes, we had to come up with a lesson plan. Everybody remember how to do a lesson plan? How long has it been since any of you did a lesson plan? Uh, I have some smiles out there. Lesson plans are a great thing. You know, I used to... Uh, when I worked for Joe before in another life, as he mentioned, he'd always want lesson plans and I'd do my best not to uh, do it because I know how to do that. I've, I've done it a bunch of times. Well, what happens when you do the same thing a bunch of times? You ever overlooked something? Yeah. Lesson plans, if you've got, if you got kind of a, uh, a recipe to go by, it's not a bad thing. But <laughs> that's not an issue because we had to come up with lesson plans for this training. so. There are lesson plans. Everybody in the country that does workshops will have the same lesson plans. So we're, we're getting to standardization that way. About one half of the workshop time, and, and we're, we're planning that the workshops will be three hours. <coughs> Pardon me. Three hours in duration. Each workshop, except for the very last workshop, will have two required topics. The lesson plans for the required topics call for, uh, actually call for 50 minutes or as required. So if you count on your fingers, you figure out that that's about by the time you do the, the time you do the training and the testing, yes, there's gonna have to be quizzes. Uh, that's about half of the time available. What are we gonna do with the other half? The other half is where we're going to get together and, and talk about topics of interest that, that may be whatever, uh, whatever is the hot subject at the time. It will probably always include some information about aircraft accidents. 
remember now, we're talking with, we're speaking primarily to flight instructors and designated pilot examiners. So, although we don't like to talk about accidents, uh, we need to know why accidents happen and how we can prevent future accidents. So it's something that's almost always going to be discussed at these workshops. But uh, in addition to that information, there'll be plenty of time for stuff that we, additional things that we want to talk about. Uh, and, you know, the list is endless about what flight instructors may want to speak about. Examples. Uh, what we'll do is when we uh, when we have a workshop we'll uh, at the end we'll say well uh, what would you guys like to talk about the next time we'll make a note of it and and what you need to understand is uh, that that these workshops since they're going to be a national project uh, they they'll they'll be many of them around the country and in, in a fast team program manager's area of responsibility, uh, which is sometimes quite a piece of real estate, in order to make it possible uh, to have a, a workshop available to all who may want to attend, uh, we're going to have to have more than one per quarter. I'll get into that a little bit more later, but it, at each of those individual workshops, the same required topics will be presented within a quarter. But as well, at each of those individual workshops, there'll be time for additional things of local interest. And that might be uh, subjects that are, are of interest to a local EAA group. Uh, it might be subjects that are uh, of interest because of the type of flying done at the location where the workshop is being presented. Uh, it might be a, a location where there are a lot of uh, uh, conventional gear airplanes, for example, or light sport airplanes. It might be at a location where there are some more sophisticated airplanes and people want to talk about other subjects. Um, but this list is, is, is just some examples of, of the information that could be shared at, uh, at these meetings. Um, Again, I mentioned before that the, the participation of designated pilot examiners is very, very important. We want their input. Um, we want to know what they're seeing uh, from the applicants that are coming to them. Uh, we want them to, uh, to answer questions about the, uh, uh, the practical test standards. So there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of information that uh, the sky is the limit. The last, the last bullet there, you name it, it's your program, is, is really where I'm going with that. It's, it's, it's what the group, particular group, wants to talk about. The role of the designated pilot examiner. Instructor critique, practical test standard clarification. Uh, if, if he or she, as a designated pilot examiner, happens to be seeing some some unsafe practices during check rides. Um, what, 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 what better method to share that information and correct it than at a meeting of, of, of flight instructors? Um, and the last bullet here again is important. We, we, want, we want all the people that do training and all the people that do evaluating to work together with us, the FAST team, as a and, and be a safety team overall. Again, uh, many heads are better than just a couple. All right, each workshop's going to be three hours in duration, uh, and that provides time for, as I alluded to earlier, the required stuff, additional stuff. We want to have plenty of time for breaks because we, we want to encourage conversation. We want to encourage the comparison of experiences among the attendees. Uh, we may on occasion want to have a breakout group. I mean, these things are all flexible. Our, our workshop program, even in the required topics, provides for 
to tell you the truth, unbelievable flexibility. So we're not locked into something. And if I can just make the point that, that what we think of as a flight instructor refresher course would typically be uh, pretty much orchestrated. Uh, you, you, you attend the course, there's a syllabus, it's followed to the letter because it has to be because remember the those courses are presented usually in a two-day period of time or or more recently over the internet but they have a program they have a time allotment and they've got to get through it and get it done we have some flexibility uh, in a number of ways that I've described earlier so so we're hoping that that will be our advantage and and to the advantage of the attendees but the time involved uh, goes by pretty fast. We've done quite a few of these and three hours uh, goes by in a blink and but we're going to limit it to three hours because we don't want people to uh, we don't want them to be overwhelmed or have to stay up too late because we understand that everybody has to work the next day and and has other other commitments. See if I can get through this and, and you know I, I I tried to uh, I tried to write this down and, and make it make sense I tried to demonstrate that it's going to be possible to, uh, to attend a workshop in more than one location uh, and still continue with the series. Uh, again, the concept is to attend all eight workshops and at the completion of the workshops, which would mean the completion of the modules, the training modules and the core topics, you'll be eligible for CFI renewal. When this plan gets going nationally, it, it will be that we could go, if we wanted to begin the program, you think, well, I mean, that guy babbled a lot, but I'll go and see what it's about. And you go to workshop number one right here in Lakeland. But your, your, your business or your, your, your personal life requires you to travel some. And during the next quarter, when workshop number two comes up, you find yourself in Cleveland. Well, it's going to be possible to go to a workshop in Cleveland because it's standardized. We talked about that. And, and they will present the required core topics for workshop number two. So we're really making an attempt and attempt to, to have this program be as user friendly as possible. I'll read through this now. I'm going to read it because I thought about it a lot and, and, and I hope that that this will, will make it make sense. I'll start at the beginning. Workshop series will be scheduled in sequence, number one through number eight. That makes sense. Same workshop, now oh, this gets a little tricky, identified as one, two, three, et cetera, will be presented during each quarter nationwide. I mean by that, that workshop number one will be presented here in Lakeland. It'll be presented up in Vermont where I live. It'll be presented in New York where Joe lives. It'll be the same workshop for the required modules, required topics, but the additional information that's presented may be different. But that's what I mean when I say the same workshop, the same required topics. Uh, different and unique topics of interest and those that are requested uh, will be presented at each of these workshops. That's what we hope will be an additional interesting draw to folks. Uh, they can request at a previous meeting what they'd like to see at the next meeting or what they'd like to talk about. Uh, workshops are going to be offered in as many locations as possible during each quarter and by that I mean you know, we, we can't get ourselves spread too thin as fast team uh, program managers, we, we, we we're going to rely heavily, I hope, on the designated pilot examiners to help us with this project. We're going to rely heavily on individuals in a local area who are CFIs and or DPEs to help us uh, orchestrate and set up these meetings. But we'll have as many as we can, depending on the geography of, of where our area is. And, and how much help we can get to do it. But we'll be at least one per quarter. 
we're just hoping that there'll be enough so that you won't have to drive more than say 50 miles to get to one when you want to go. As many locations as possible, that's when. That's the answer to one of the original thoughts that we had. That's, that's when they'll be. They'll be as many as possible, but at least one per quarter. You'll be able to attend any workshop in the series, that's the series one to eight, in the whole country, and it'll count towards your series completion because it's going to be a standardized syllabus and lesson plan for the required subjects. Since the same workshop and its required topics is repeated at all locations during a quarter, a quarter is three months, so you can go to any workshop in your area during the quarter and continue on with the series. You can complete the next workshop that you need to complete in order to get your CFI renewed. And let me say again that you may not come to these solely for the purpose to renew your CFI. We're not as dumb as we look. If you, if you need to get your CFI renewed uh, with expedience, you probably will want to go to a flight instructor refresher course, or you'll probably want to do it online. We understand that. We can't compete with, with, the, uh, you know, with the quickness that, that those courses are completed. What we're saying is we're going to provide more than that because we're going to, we're going to have a chance for collaboration, we have extra topics, et cetera. And oh, by the way, in addition to that advantage, you will be able to renew your CFI at the completion of the workshop series. That's where, many places as possible. If you miss the next workshop, for example, you attended, let's say you attended one, two, and three, but during the next quarter you just, you just couldn't get to the one that's, uh, that's presented where you usually like to go. Well, remember, you can go to, to one anyway. You can go to one in the next state, you can go to one in the next town, wherever there's another workshop. If you happen to miss one, you can go to another one. So the question comes up, well, has come up frequently. Well, this is great, but it's a long series, and, and how, what if I miss one? I uh, start all over again? No. You go to one that's held somewhere else. It might be a little inconvenient for you to get there. Another possibility, depending on, on the time that the, uh, that the program manager and or DPE, the, the people that are, are actually the ones that will be present uh, orchestrating, let me use that word, these meetings, we're, we're gonna, they are facilitators. You might be able to get with a facilitator and make up the core topics, the required ones that you missed individually. I, I can't promise that. I know that will satisfy the requirement as far as your renewal. But I can't say that everybody will always have time to do that. Believe it or not, we do keep pretty busy in the FAST team. But the, question, the answer to how often is, uh, as, as we mentioned. Okay, so you can begin the program with any workshop, continue through it, and uh, satisfactorily complete it, get your CFI renewed. And, and what happens uh, when this series ends we're going to go one through eight. When we get to number eight, we're going to start over again and, and, and present the same program, the required topics, with additional stuff of interest that will be unique to that particular meeting. Uh, there's no charge for this. Uh, we, we, there's no, no fee involved. Uh, it's for free. Uh, it is approved by the certification branch. I can attest to that as far as, yes, we can renew your CFI based on completion. And what we're thinking is uh, for a small investment of time, that's three hours every three months, um, you, you, get, you get support from the FAA, the FAST team, industry, industry because we're going to have industry speakers when it's appropriate, like if we want to talk about uh, technically advanced aircraft and each other. We're going to support each other. CFI renewal is a bonus. Aviation safety becomes the big winner because this will help aviation safety. 
I'm going to show you now a few of the core topics, the required ones. These are the ones I know will be presented. And this, these topics are oriented to instructors, remember. They're somewhat technical occasionally. As far as wings credit goes, uh, they are at the master level. So it'll be master, master wings for any CFI DPE meeting. 15 required core topics. Again, these are the same topics that, that anyone that's doing an instructor renewal program has to present. And, and the FAST team is one that everybody has to talk about. Wings has to be uh, addressed. Technically advanced aircraft, GPS navigation, IACRA, sport pilot, uh, transportation security uh, administration, security related special use airspace, safety trends in general aviation. You can read, I don't have to read all of these to you. You can see that within those subjects, there's a lot of room for, uh, for flexibility. If we want to talk about uh, GPS navigation, for example, we can talk about simple GPS navigation, we can talk about GPS navigation that's hooked into an FMS. Depends on the crowd, but we can tailor it that way. We're going to talk about runway incursions as an example of one of the required topics. And so I've got a short presentation about runway incursions for that reason here. It, it's not going to be as in-depth as it would be at, at, a, at a workshop, but remember we're talking about a lesson plan that's 50 minutes or less. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the additional stuff that might be included after runway incursions. Do you want to talk about runway incursions, Joe? I'm, I'm well, what I wanted to do... Yeah, please. What I wanted to do at this point, we've heard about the nuts and bolts of what Jim has been putting together with his team. <clears throat> but I'm going to look at the flexibility, the dynamics of what we're talking about here. The CFI DPE, they are the industry that we're addressing. They will in turn carry these messages out to the flying public through their flight reviews, through initial certification methods. The, I can't tell you how many presentations I've done, I've asked, how many of you still use the practical test standard? And they say, well, gee, last time I used it was when I was certified. Well, that, that is a standard to which everybody needs to fly every time they fly. That's the minimal standard. The beauty of what we're trying to develop here, the CFI renewal piece is at the end of the line. I personally, I'm not that concerned about that. What I am concerned about is the ability to have a forum that we facilitate at. We're not going to pontificate. We're not going to lecture. That's not the plan here. The CFIs, DPEs, the industry that come, they're going to sit down. We're going to show the accident data. We do daily analysis of what's going on. We're in the phase of flight. We have collaborated with the University of North Dakota. We have a tool that's out, it's in a CD, uh, that we'll be using at these. That shows, for example, the use of flaps versus wind. Flap or not to flap. Only the wind has the answer to that one. We're going to talk about the use of flaps and wind in LSA aircraft. Accidents at seven knot crosswind is the highest number of accidents to occur is in that environment. Pilot awareness, sensitivity to risk, not to involve their passengers in an aircraft accident. But here's another piece that when they leave, the program does not stop. It took me five years to get, we've got it. We have a special server that allows us to set up meetings for the CFIs and DPs to communicate. This is no longer I have a secret, you have to find out about it. CFIs, DPs may have experienced something, they want to share it. We will set up abilities for them to have outside meetings. They don't count towards the renewal process, you have to attend those physical meetings for that. But that's the small part of the deal. You can get your CFI renewed anywhere, but you can't sit down and talk with a DPE and say, why did you do that on the check ride? Or a CFI hears from a DP, why do I see folks that are doing this and not doing that, and what's the story here? And now this, this leveling of the information field gets there. So after they leave, the next morning, Johnny Jones talks to Mary Sue and says, by the way, I was out and I was listening to Jim Lev the other night. He talked about landings or takeoffs and performance, blah, blah, blah. I, boy, they hit a good point on this. Now, it goes to Susie Q, who then thinks about it and says to somebody else, word of mouth advertising. They may very well come, but you know what? If they don't come to the meeting for whatever reason, they have just picked up another golden nugget of information that they can contribute to somebody. Given that deal, given that, we may have mitigated the risk of an accident. In this business, you never know the effect. 
We may not know how many lives we've saved or how many aircraft incidents or accidents were avoided. We'll never know. But the thing is, there may have been a lot more than what we see at the end of a fiscal year or calendar year in accident count. But we'll never know that. The bottom line is we may start seeing a better flight check done, a more encompassing flight review rather than the ceremonial one where they go up and they do a couple of pattern things. I'm not saying every CFI does that, but we all have to be big folks and big boys to know that it is done. Oh, yeah, you're, you're good, John. I've, been, I've known you for 15, 20 years. You're no problem here. Go. You're done. Well, either pass or fail. But the thing is to include more information based on accident analysis and data and local conditions, whether it be sport aircraft, whether it be home-built aircraft, whether it be jet aircraft, whatever is out there. The, the, the nuts and bolts of what has to be done for certification or renewal of a certificate, that's at the end of the day. Big. That's, that's down the road. The daily operation that you folks, CFIs and DPEs, can take from the classroom, from your forum, and we're going to sit there as facilitators taking down IOUs and talking points and stuff for information. You go from the chair to the cockpit or the classroom, and you transfer the information to someone else who may very well pick up the phone. Or you may want to have a telecon conversation with some folks, and we will set that up for you on our server. And you can see desktops, whatever you need. I even put in an 800 number that we could handle about 15 or 20 people on a telecon. No charge to the, to, to the reps out there that are going to be doing this, the reps meaning the volunteers. Jim can't do them all, I can't do them all, and the other 17 inspectors that work for me, they can't do these. So we're going to depend on you folks to do this. This is your program. You can take it to new heights. You can bend this, move it, whatever you need to do. The only thing in the background, we've got this course stuff we have to do if you want to do the renewal piece, but we're also going to give you the accident data. Every month I send accident data to the insurance industry and industry partners that I have and the uh, departments of transportation of every state that I have from North Carolina to Maine. I work with them constantly. We are in tight collaboration with the state departments of transportation. It's your program. You are the folks that are going to take this place, take it to new heights. If you say that there is not enough conversation, then we will make more conversation. We try to hold it three hours. I can tell you it takes a lot of effort to shut it down in three hours because the conversation wants to continue. How about the next night, a group in the CFI says, you know, let's meet at uh, Applebee's. Let's meet at the diner. Let's meet over at ABC Flight School. Let, let's talk some more about this performance or crosswind or whatever. Well, you know what? That's a long ball home run. That fact that the CFIs and the DPEs bought into this and said, you know what, we got to do some more on this. They take the reins and run with it. Our job has been done. We've planted the seed. We've given you the, 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 the fertilized ground. Go with it. Go for it. Make it happen. It's your program. It's industry's program. Not mine, not Jim's, not the FAs. We just put the shell out there. But we've got to get the folks who have the answers we don't have the answers. And once I find out all the answers, I'm going to burn my certificate anyway. But we don't have the answers, and we're going to get all you folks who have so much experience out there. You know, individually, I got, what, 15 so thousand hours plus? Collaboratively, together, millions of hours. Insights, ideas, things that work, best practices, what to do with an LSA airplane and crosswind, what not to do, what to do with this airplane, what to do with that airplane. All right, that information is needed. And that's pretty much what I wanted to get across to you. This is a very dynamic and passionate program. You folks are professionals. You folks are the teaching knowledge base of aviation. How do we make a better private pilot out there looking at all that fancy hardware out there? Making them more aware and sensitive to the risks of not involving themselves in the aircraft accident and, more importantly, not involving their passengers in the aircraft accident. Nobody wants to go out and crash an airplane. It just happens. Jim, you only got a couple minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go very quickly through this, these few slides. Um, this, this is our, our presentation or excerpts of the presentation about runway safety. I wanted to show you that there is a lesson plan. And, and it's fine print, so it's hard to read. But, uh, but there is a lesson plan. And this is, this is the one that I mentioned that would be shared by everybody who presents a presentation of runway safety. It just has to satisfy the lesson plan. It doesn't have to be specific in the nature of subjects. For this one that I 
uh, selected for today, uh, the topic is takeoffs and taxiing, which has to do, of course, with runway safety. And a point I want to make is that this is from the central region. It's a, a, a PowerPoint presentation that's available, but it might not get the exposure that it deserves. It might not be shared with as many instructors as, as it should be uh, if there's no forum for them to have it presented to them at. And as an example of, of uh, the additional stuff, oops, I skipped over the quiz. See, there's a quiz too, but it's fairly simple. But we have to, we have to, as a part of the recertification, we have to, we have to test and keep a record of it. So, yeah, there's a quiz. I have a presentation uh, that was made up for us by uh, uh, the Southwest region, not for us, but for for everyone. That has to do with uh, with takeoffs and landings. And, and this is another example of a really great presentation that might not get to as many people as would be appropriate if there was not a forum for it, which is what the CFI DPE meetings workshops are going to be. I'm going through it kind of quickly, but I want you to see the, the, the real expertise that went into this program. And there are also videos, folks, or videos that, are, that go along with this, that the University of North Dakota did fantastic work. And our biggest problem in crosswind landing, seven knots, which I've already mentioned is our biggest problem here, but they address how to do it right or not do it at all. Now this, is, this has been a quick example because we're running out of time, and that's my fault for going on. I'm sorry, but, uh, but I want you to see the, the quality of the presentations that will be available and, and understand that uh, again, this is, this is where we can, we can share so much knowledge among ourselves and so, much of the, uh, so many of the fine presentations that are available. And the final thought is that aviation done right the first time, uh, decisions that are based on knowledge and the maintenance of proficiency will equal the highest level of aviation safety possible, and that's our goal. Now, we have only a brief time but does, left, but does anybody have any questions? If so, Joe will answer them because he's the question. Yes, sir. Uh, when will they start? Well, they have started. Uh, what we don't have is the order in place. We're waiting for that process. Once the order is in place, the headquarters says, okay, it's going, then we can start counting the CFI workshops that you attend towards the renewal process, but they are going on now with the benefit of exchanging information. And where do we look for? SPAN's announcement. Please be registered with FASafety.gov. We need all the DPEs. I've asked Jim Piles, who was on previously to us, to please put a DPE uh, mark in there. It'll be a CFI, a yada, 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 but also a DPE so we can target you folks at our DPEs and CFIs. Yes, sir. Yes, I just wanted to say I've been to my first uh, CFI DPE meeting, and I will have to say that I think it, there's still some learning or some uh, process that we need to go through to try to get it standardized, try to get into the module idea so that everybody uh, is challenged during those uh, meetings, and I think that was a problem that I had. But uh, I'm hopeful, and what you say sounds like it, it, it's going to work real well. Thank you very Thank much, you, sir. Yeah, and the, we, we, we appreciate the feedback. The only way we're going to make this program better is for, for folks to share their, uh, you know, their thoughts. So. And share it with the presenters. Please do that because, again, we do not want to pontificate. We want your data because this is your program, not the presenter's program. Okay. Thank you. I'm the short version of the FAA, by the way. Stay right here. We're still on camera. Oh, okay. My pleasure. You look familiar I to me. I spent a lot of time in, uh, I guess, uh, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. I've probably what seen you around Lakewood, the... Yeah. Yeah, but down there, you must know Tim McSwain. Yeah.